color. That means that just like a photograph, you have to have a photographic plate and light has to hit it straight. Light cannot hit it at an angle. So we know for a fact the radiation that hit it was perpendicular. We know the closer the cloth is, the darker the image, 3D. We know there's no directionality of light. That means when you take a picture of a person in a room and you look at that picture, you always know where the light is. The sun's over here, the light's over here, something's on it lighting up the person. This light doesn't have directionality. This light looks as if it came from inside of the body out. So the energy then we, is adding to the story that the energy came from inside the body. So the Im remember, the image is weak. It doesn't burn the cloth. It, this big fiber, it only hits the top fibrils. The image is not under the blood. So that means first the blood was on the cloth, and second the image happened. It also means, again, the weak energy couldn't penetrate blood. All right? And then it breaks, this is a fact, chemistry. It, the, the energy, whatever it was, broke, broke the carbon bonds, the carbon-carbon molecule bonds that make up a carbohydrate molecule by oxidizing it and make it look um, aged more than it really was. All right? So all that has to be in my explanation. Not mine. I'm just repeating my, what people tell me. All right. To fulfill re these requirements, the first clue, the cloth at the moment of the resurrection and the time before it, has to, it has to change positions at the moment of the resurrection. All right, so this is before the resurrection. You have a cloth sticking to a person who has bled everywhere. So if you bleed on your arm and you have a long sleeve shirt, I'm sure you remember getting the blood stuck to the cloth, all right? Like a scab is stuck, all right? So now you have a man who's got blood stuck to the cloth. All this blood is sticking to the cloth. It's embedded in the fibers, right? The problem with that is that none of the clots are disturbed. They're complete, perfectly shaped clots as they originally bled out into the cloth. How is that possible that a person could stand up, take a cloth off, and not rip the clots or change their position? All right? So that's the first clue. He didn't stand up. He didn't take the cloth off like that. All right? So, undisturbed clots. These are all the facts we're dealing with, right? All right, now, the first position of the shroud, if it stayed tight around his body and the radiant energy came out and hit the, hit the shroud, you would have a distorted, circular, uh, it's called cylindrical image with thick, you know, overdone hair, big fat face. It just looks terrible because the photographic plate here is not flat. It's curved, right? So that means the second position had to be attained. The shroud had to somehow unwrap in some millisecond, and the heat would possibly do that, and, and fill it up in a more of a flat position so when the radiation light came out of the body, it had to hit the shroud perpendicular, or you don't have a picture. You have this picture, all right? No cylindrical image distortion. So this is a painting or a picture drawn of what we think happened scientifically. The body, at the millisecond of the resurrection, floated, because there's no weight on the tissue. There's no impression like it weighs 180 pounds lying on a rock. The body is now in a position where the shroud is no longer touching it. So in this millisecond of time, the shroud has come out. And as the shroud comes out, the body's dematerializing. So therefore, the clots are not sticking to the cloth or the, they're sticking to the cloth, not the body. All right? So, shroud unwraps, flattens out. Now, I don't know how this happened. We'll probably never know how it happened. But we know it did have to happen according to the picture we are given. So we're working backwards, right? No gravity, clots detach, undisturbed from the body. Body does not move inside the cloth. The shroud is, shroud is perpendicular. So, the atoms disintegrate into all the components of the atom, which you guys know way more than me because in 1964, we just know there were atoms, electrons, and protons. Okay, so all those things disagree. It radiates 360 degrees in all directions, but the radiation goes in 600, 360 degrees, but where's the shroud? It's only at 180 degrees. It's on the bottom, it's on the top. So all the radiation going this way doesn't do anything about an image. Therefore, no ears, no cheeks. Okay? The image of the ears and the cheeks went that way. All right, so matter is turned into energy. Well, obviously we do that all the time with an atomic bomb. All right? So this is what happened. I'm not kidding. Some un way that we cannot understand, but we know from the picture parts of the components of the energy, this body disappeared and went someplace else. The man in the shroud did not stand up and take off the shroud. So it's the same thing as the 
Star Trek. All right, so what do we know now? You guys are so privileged to be here in 2014. I want you to go to shroud.com, please. Shroud.com. Easy to remember. And read some more about it. <clears throat> because when, I, when you get to college, people are going to doubt, make you doubt your faith. It happened to me. All right? But I didn't have the shroud. You guys got the shroud. You have scientific information. You have things you can go back to. You can say, okay, John, um, you're calling me a jerk for being a Christian? Fine. Well, you want to try to prove how the image got on the shroud. And if, you, if John is an honest person, he will not be able to tell you. He'll look it up and say, I don't know. And as soon as he says, I don't know, he's a good guy, and Christianity is viable. Thank you.